All right, so kicking it off first is the Craftsman V20 Brushless Dual Hex and Drill Pack. They also had them individually for $89.99 should you choose to buy them both, but I think it's a better deal to get it for $179. That's just my opinion. They also have a half inch impact um, hammer that we're gonna be talking about here. So we're gonna take a closer look at all of what Craftsman currently has on the Lowe's showroom floor. So they got all your basic contracting tools, about two or three different variations of drills and hex drivers. More specifically, we're gonna take a closer look at that half inch impact because we are talking about Cordless tools that are the underdogs for automotive technology. Looking at this for 120 bucks, believe that's bare tool. It might come with a battery and a charger. I felt that the head was a little bit long. Not sure how the power would hold up over time, but it's nice that they have it. Didn't see a 3 8 drive anywhere. Didn't see a cordless ratchet anywhere. Those two might be tools they might develop in the future since it is Craftsman and they did start off with the contractor side as well as the automotive side when they first came into production. A lot of automotive mechanics from way back in the day started off with Craftsman. I would hope that they are looking towards the future by adding a couple of more tools that would be more versatile in the automotive realm. But let us not forget that Lowe's was a huge supplier of Cobalt for the longest time. They are slowly kind of cutting back on what they have to offer as far as mechanic sets but they also have their fair share of cordless tool lineup that's not going away anytime soon, so I can tell. But we're gonna take a look at the prices of the batteries and the chargers and also look and see what they have for the lineup. They also have some of the similar items that you can expect from Craftsman and amongst other companies. Fans, contractor radios, circ saws, vacuum cleaners, they got leaf blowers, they got flashlights, they got angle grinders, they got multi-tools, they got just a plethora of different tools, but more specifically, again, we're looking for the automotive cordless options from Cobalt. We're looking for that half inch impact in the 24 volt VMAX lineup, as well as a 3 8 drive, possibly a ratchet if they have one, but I don't think that they do. All right, so here we go. Now we're looking at the half inch and the 3 8 drive. Looks a little, I like the body style so far. Comfortable grip and it's not this long head. Okay, it's a nice short, almost a stubby option. I think they actually even do sell a stubby option in the half inch as well as the 3 8 drive. So if you're looking for the 24 volt VMAX, you might check out Cobalt. I think for what they're charging you, it's a fair price for what it is you're getting. Again, an underdog tool that is mostly overlooked. Everyone's looking at Milwaukee, which we'll get into later, but we're looking for the underdog platforms of all the other manufacturers out there like DeWalt. DeWalt still has their XR drill, hex driver, Sawzall. Again, a lot of construction tools, a lot of contractor tools here, but they have even offered you a 3 8 drive and a half inch drive XR. We're gonna take a look at that a little bit closer. Also, wishing that DeWalt would kind of dive in a little bit more, at least offer a 3 8 drive ratchet, because I know that that could also be used in construction, not just automotive. Because if, if the construction workers can use a 3 8 drive and a half inch impact gun to throw lag bolts in, I'm sure there's cabinet makers that could use a 3 8 drive uh, ratchet of some kind in a cordless fashion so they're not dragging air hose through the house. They also had some atomic brushless. The XR was brushless. They're getting into the brushless system. The body style is cool looking. The handles are comfortable. In their 20 volt lithium ion setup, they still have that fuel option. So you can check that fuel, uh, what is it, the battery indicator on the back. I know that Milwaukee's calling it the fuel indicator. I think even DeWalt's calling it. Of course, they are paying uh, Milwaukee for using that uh, copyright, uh, whatever. There's a clause in there, right? They own the rights to it. DeWalt's got to pay them a little fraction of however many are sold for that. Drywall screwdrivers, regular screwdrivers, multi-tools, again, sawzaws, um, just research saws. And they got it all, man. Angle grinders. They have a nice lineup of tools. Obviously, they don't have quite the lineup that Milwaukee has, but I'm looking for the underdog again. I'm looking for tools that people have forgotten about that still exist that could come in at a more competitive price and they might overall be better. Even Bosch is getting into the half inch uh, impact gun, okay? Didn't see a 3 8 option. Thought it was kind of goofy looking, but hey, uh, if it works, it works. If you have a bunch of Bosch tools, you might go check that out. 
a little underpowered from what I could feel in the showroom. Could be undercharged too. All right, now we're over at Home Depot checking out Makita. Now for Makita, I could tell you I've got the LXT. We also have these blue and black ones here at the house. Love them so far. Haven't had any issues with the 12 uh, volt or the 18 volt. Using the LXTs over at work, both the hex driver, the drill, and the sawzall you see up here in the top right corner. That thing's been pretty awesome and gets into tight spaces. I also know that Makita came out with a 3 8 drive cordless ratchet option, which is awesome. At least somebody's doing it outside of Makita. Or, I'm sorry, outside of Milwaukee. All right, now here we are in Milwaukee. Now, this is all Gen 1 stuff. Home Depot, get with the program. Get the Fuel 2, get the Gen 2 out there. We're getting ready to step into Gen 3. You're still carrying the old platform. Back to DeWalt, but now we're over at Home Depot trying to look for that half inch impact trying to see what the 3 8 looks like didn't see any 3 8 drive uh showcased on the floor but did see one in the box with battery with charger underneath in the secured area that's all locked up but we are getting ready to take a look at the new xr half inch or well relatively new half inch impact gun i'm really curious about this because it i've heard good things I've been asked, Justin, what are your thoughts? I don't have thoughts on this, but I'm going to get thoughts for you. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Let's take a look. $239.99. Unfortunately, the sale ended February 3rd, but now you can buy it for $399, and it comes with a 4-amp hour battery versus the 3-amp hour battery that you get free with charger. Let's not forget Harbor Freight. Again, another underdog trying to compare themselves to Snap-on and various tool platforms, but they have a 3 8 drive ratchet cordless. They have the 20 volt lithium earthquake in the half inch in the 3 8 with a long anvil or the short anvil. You're only really saving 10 bucks difference between the long anvil and the short anvil. I could tell you that the body or the head of it, a little bit longer than I would have wanted to see, but nonetheless, seems pretty heavy duty. Love the grip on it. They even have that stupid polisher that Milwaukee's trying to sell you for 300 and some odd dollars. And I think you get it for a fraction of the cost. So if you're new to automotive and you don't want to drop big dollars, don't rule these guys out because if you're just starting off, these underdogs could save you a killer amount of money and you never know, they might just hold up for longer than you think. But that's not all. Today we're actually going to be discussing two tools that I picked up while I was showcasing some of the underdog tools out there because you guys asked for my opinion. I didn't have an opinion. I felt like I kind of owed you an opinion, especially since I've kind of gone out of my way to uh, express some of the downfalls of the Milwaukee lineup that I have seen so far as a Milwaukee tool owner. But you guys have asked for me to test out the Dewalt XR half inch, and that's exactly what I got. So I'm going to go ahead and show you we're going to talk about three different half inch impact cordless options that I own and some of the features and benefits when it comes down to pricing, applied torque, and breakaway torque. So that being said, first let me show you the tool and then we'll dive into some specs and pricing. So I picked this guy up today. Whoa, this feels like a beast, an absolute beast. It is brushless. It does have a rubberized and I feel like almost ergonomic. It's very comfortable and form fitting to my hand. It has three different settings here at the top of the base. The base is a lot more narrow than the base of the Milwaukee. The Milwaukee base is a bit thicker, bit longer. The sliding in and sliding out as far as its ability to accept the battery appears to be of a similar style. A little slop, I'm wondering if that's going to get worse over time, especially with the constant hammering. You might say that feels weak. It is weak. I just bought it. This battery has not been fully charged, so I cannot show you the be all end all of this tool. We're also on setting number one. This is setting number two. Okay, this is setting number three. And that's not a fully charged battery. If I had to guess, it's probably sitting somewhere around 50%. We're going to talk about how this battery charge system works because it is a little bit different than the Milwaukee. The Milwaukee will sit there and flash, and then it'll go solid red, and then it'll go green when it's fully charged. 
The charge time for the eight volt battery of the second tool that I picked up from DeWalt today took approximately 30 minutes. I haven't plugged this one in just yet. Here's a little eight volt battery. When you plug it into DeWalt's charger, Make sure I have it facing the right way. It will flash when it's charging. It will remain solid red when it is complete and it's 100% charged. Here is the second tool that I picked up. It's just a little tiny cordless hex screwdriver. Kind of interesting. It's kind of a slow go kind of starts off slow and then goes. I'm not sure I'm digging that yet, DeWalt. Let me see, is there a reversible setting? That's clearly left. That's right. Not sure what's up with that, to be honest. So that's Titan. I don't understand. I don't understand the concept of this tool. I thought, and I, by looking at it, I was like, oh, this would be great for the interior of cars, right? Because you can use it in small, tight spaces and it's not a gun, right? It's just this little tiny pen style uh, screwdriver. There is no direction on how to flip it from one way to the other. There's a locking switch down at the bottom. It is fully charged. What is that? I don't you have to turn it. I'm holding it. Now it's not doing nothing. Oh. Okay, it's me. Hang on a second. So you point. Loosen. Tighten. Loosen. Tighten. Okay, that's just freaking weird. That's kind of tripped me out. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Gyroscopic technology. Loosen, tighten. Tighten. Loosen, tighten. Loosen. Very interesting concept, okay? In the beginning, you saw I had some difficulties trying to understand what it is that I was exactly doing with this. I might try it out for a week or two, just see how I feel about that. It's a very interesting concept, you all. I'll give you that. So, ergo, I'm not gonna condemn this just yet. I do wanna try it out in the real world and see how that holds up. I also wouldn't mind trying this out in the real world too. One of the benefits that I've seen so far from the Dewalt XR 20 volt half inch impact is this. So on the Milwaukee, here on the Anvil, they still have a snap ring. The snap ring is meant to take an impact socket, not a chrome socket. There are some shade tree guys such as myself that will still put a chrome socket on it if we don't have an impact socket of that size. Don't you judge me. And that's what the detent anvil is for, okay? It has a little detent ball right here instead of the snap ring, so you can use chrome or impact sockets in the construction field when I was doing solar for the electrician union, I could tell you that we had the Makita one and it also had an anvil tipped kind of thing, did not have a snap ring. We used it all the time with uh, chrome, and chrome sockets. We didn't have impact sockets, so. I have high hopes for this. Something I should mention because I don't think it's been mentioned before or at least it hasn't been really talked about a lot. When it comes to the brushless lineup, Yes, it is meant to have more power okay, than the brushed system. A brush tool, if I'm not mistaken, is the rigid that I ha currently have. 
It could be brushless too. I'm, I'm for sure that it's uh, brushed though. So here's the rigid one and I have actually used this in automotive as well as I made it a home use tool after I put it through the paces and it also has the anvil detent ball. That is the X4 model. I do believe that is the brushed model. But you guys can look it up for your own. Let's talk about some specs real quick and pricing. Okay, the rigid one that I just showed you, 485 max applied torque, 620 foot-pounds of breakaway torque. Comes in at 200 bucks, that's with battery and two, I'm sorry, two batteries, charger, and the tool. Let's talk about DeWalt. DeWalt, the XR model that I have here in front of me, comes in at $300, a max torque of 700 foot-pounds, and a breakaway torque of 1,200 foot-pounds. Your choice is between three amp hour, four amp hour, or five amp hour. This one has a four amp hour battery on it. So the higher amperage batteries you get, the more expensive it's gonna cost. The Milwaukee, okay, $439. That's one battery with charge pack and the half inch impact fuel tube. 700 foot-pounds max applied torque, 1,100 foot-pounds breakaway torque, your choice is between three amp hour and five amp hour batteries. Okay, so those are your options, those are your specs, those are your prices between the three tool lineups that I currently own. You should note, with the brushless system, it's not meant to get wet. It's not meant to be around oil or coolant or anything like that, though I'm sure a lot of mechanics out there have been utilizing Milwaukee, same as me, in those kind of conditions, and they continue to hold up. The reason why they tell you that is because this brushless system has sparks that occur on the inside and it could be ignitable. Some fluids such as ATF that's most commonly used in power steering as well as fuel, if you're working with something that has a fuel leak, could ignite and the tool could potentially catch fire. Which is why Snap-on for the longest time was just brushed. They didn't go to brushless until what, last year, or the, the beginning of this year. So I believe that they have gone the brushless route. I'd be curious to see those tools up close to see what the ventilation on the side looks like, how they're able to protect it from the fluids from going in it and sparks to potentially cause some kind of a fire. Do not rule out the underdog, gentlemen. This tool is very powerful. If you were to ever put two tools side by side, which I'm gonna try to do in a series of video clips between the Milwaukee and the Dewalt XR, I would say this, those two, Dewalt Milwaukee, have the highest applied, highest breakaway torque that I have seen so far. Not saying other tool companies haven't potentially done it, but those two being a very good battle. But don't rule out the underdog, okay? And I'm sure, like I said, there's a lot of other platforms that come in at a lot cheaper or more of a fair price. I believe that this Dewalt is of a fair price comes in at approximately $140, $150 cheaper than the Milwaukee. Keep that in the back of your mind. I'm gonna run this through the paces. I'm gonna have myself a beer, I'm gonna charge my tool, and I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my evening. I hope you guys do too. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. Share with me down in the comments if you wanna see these two stacked up side by side in the automotive realm. I wanna know. You wanna see what this made in USA freaking XR has to offer? Let me know down in the comments. See you guys next time. Cheers and deuces.